and welcome back I'm gonna turn this down for a second welcome back to a new video and welcome back to my channel how you guys doing I am in a really weird mood today and I thought I'd film um, I'm pre-filming this because I am going back to work the day after filming this I don't know really don't know I don't really know my days yet because I've only got two days in my rotor at the moment but also I don't I just felt like filming and I thought why not whilst I have the motivation to do it because yeah so before we get into this video you know this you know the drill um if you do enjoy this video please hit a thumbs up please comment down below please subscribe please follow my social medias they'll pop up somewhere in the video and they'll pop they're also in the description down below and without further ado let's just get on with the video I don't want to do my hands let's get some water quickly because my throat is dry So, for this video, I'm going to try and make it as short as possible, but I'm also going to give you like, a little bit of detail. This is probably the first proper one about food on my channel. I'm not cooking with you guys. Don't get your hopes up. Um, I'm actually giving you five quick and easy recipes for students um, that can be done different ways, with different ingredients. Um, that can also be cheap as well, depending on where you shop. If you shop in Morrison's, it's not going to be cheap. But if you shop in like, places like Tesco or Asda or Lidl or Audi, because um, then you're going to get the good prices. My usual shop to shop is either Tesco or Lidl. Um, I am moving towards Lidl because they're cheaper, and I need the money more for next year. So yeah. Um, so if you want to learn tips, if you are a new student going into first year of September. Well, I don't know if you're going to be going, like, actually moving there, because obviously coronavirus is a thing, but you might be, or if you're just a student who wants to expand on like, cooking and actually cook food instead of having ready meals or oven food, which there's nothing wrong with with doing that if that's what you want to do, but cooking actual food is pretty good, and you can meal prep, you can make enough for like two days, so you cook, you make a massive meal, and then you cook it for two days or more, and you can have it, so when you come home from lectures, if you have, so for example, so you have, either, let's say it's either a weekend, and you're not, you don't have a job, and you have like, Monday, you finish at five, and you just don't want to come back and cook, or sometimes you might finish at seven, and you don't want to come back and cook, then you have the option of, if you cook stuff to prepare for, I don't know if you focus on me. I think you are. Um, you can cook stuff for pre preparation on a Sunday night. Um, or if you know you're going on nights out during the week, you need to have a certain amount of food. So you can cook stuff um, like the day before, prepare it, and have it the next day. And put it in the fridge, and then you just heat it up. And that is, makes the most out of your money instead of having something that lasts a day, and then that's it. So... This is a really good opportunity. Um, these five meals um, are things I be, I eat a lot and I cook a lot because I don't cook my like, big dishes. I don't really experiment. Once I know how to do something, I leave it at that. But also, I do want to experiment and I do have a uh, what's it, cookbook. I think they're called a cookbook. I'm going to call them a cookbook because I can't think of anything else. Recipe book. That's the one. Um... But I haven't really used it. I've had it since first year. And I've never actually really. I've looked at it, but never actually really used it. But when I made sausage casserole in first year, and then my husband last year made pasta bake. But anyway, let's get on with this video. So my first dish is very something very simple and easy actually to make, and that is some kind of curry. Chicken korma is my go-to, but you can make other curries like prawn curry. I made prawn and prawn curry. But, um, you, um, and you can make it very simply and so you don't have to go through the whole making a sauce yourself. Maybe. I mean, I want to learn to make a sauce, but as a for a student meal, if you're either in a rush or you don't really want to stand cooking for ages because you don't want to get on, but this is, it's very easy to make. You get a jar of sauce, which you can get, and you can get them from anywhere, and it can, you can, don't, I don't recommend you buy the branded ones unless they're on offer. But like Lidl has their own brand and it's usually like a pound or eighty nine P for a jar when you'd be able to spend two pounds on a branded one. So you don't need to get the branded stuff. That's another I'll I'm gonna leave tips at the end of like how to buy food as a student and how to save money. But I'll do this first. Um you buy whatever meat you want to put it in it, whether it's chicken or maybe pork. I don't know, I've never made pork one or like prawn or 
fish or you can so you can make it just if you're vegetarian or vegan you can make it vegetarian you can put like potatoes and carrots and veg in it um you don't really need to have it with meat it's not something you just have to have meat in um it is obviously usually meat but you don't have to um and it still tastes good um and then you just buy a specific rice you want so i usually get pilau rice because that's my favorite rice with curries um and i usually buy them in the bags we can just heat them up for two minutes because i don't eat rice on like a daily basis I don't eat rice and I can, all, like all the time, so I don't really buy a massive packet of rice. I just buy like the packets of pilau rice in like the microwave ones, and it takes two minutes to heat up. And then you pour it um, in the frying pan with your food. So basically, what you do is so I'm going to base it off chicken korma because that's what I do. I usually cut up some onions, um, cut up the chicken. I always do the onions first because. I don't have to wash the knife again to cut the chicken but if you cut the chicken first you have to wash the knife and then cut it, the onion because cross contamination um, and then I cut the chicken up and then I pour it all into a frying pan and I fry it all together because if you fry it with the onions it gives it like some flavour anyway from that and then I put seasoning in so I usually use stuff like garlic, mixed herbs, salt, pepper, um, jerk chicken seasoning, um, paprika and sometimes turmeric but not really turmeric because no and then i usually mix it all together and then once that once the chicken is basically cooked like when it's gone like white on all, the, all over i pour the sauce in sorry my ho old housemate's being annoying anyway um and then once the sauce has got like hotter in the pan in the frying pan you pour the right pour the rice no you put the rice in the microwave for just however long it says two to two minutes make sure you rip the top off because otherwise it will explode in the microwave and we you don't want to hear that it's a really terrifying sound once um the rice is done you can either pour it on the plate and then pour the, put the corn on the top which is what i do or you can mix it in um, but don't put all the rice on the plate because otherwise you won't be able to because usually you can make enough curry out if you put two chicken breasts cut two chicken breasts out and put it in or even one but i would say two you can make enough for two days um so put half the rice in on your plate and then half, half the rice in like a container with the rest of the curry and put it leave it to cool and put it in the fridge that's really stuff logic Sorry, my housemate is literally impatient with waiting for this deposit back. It's just, just chill. Um, I think my housemate now is my old housemate. Um, that's dish number one. Dish number two is something so simple as chicken and bacon pasta. Now this is all gonna my my thing is gonna it's gonna be mainly chicken because that's what I usually cook a lot. But you can do it with other things as simple. But this basically is a very very simple dish where you put you cook the pasta you boil the pasta with water you get chi a, a, one piece of chicken and three or four slices of bacon and you cut them up i usually put spring onions in that because it's some kind of like vegetable i guess i don't i'm not really a veg person i'm not gonna lie I'm more of a fruit person but i do like my onions um cut up spring, if you don't have spring onions you can do red onions you can do any onions i use spring onions in this because i like it chop it up um you put it all in the frying pan, you fry it with seasoning, any seasoning you want, which you like, whether well, it's just salt and pepper and not lot. Also, one thing when it comes to pasta, I do recommend you season the water that is boiling in, because it just gives the pasta a bit more flavour as well. Obviously, the pasta will get flavour from the food you put on, but still. Then once everything is cooked, you drain the pasta off, and then you chuck the bacon, sauce, sausages, bacon, chicken, and spring onions into the pasta mix it together i do it in my colander 
as it's just easy. Oh, and you can put sweet corn in this. I put sweet corn in it the other day. I forgot to mention that one. I need to get more of that. And then once you mix it together, you put some mayonnaise in it and you mix it together and it just makes some really nice chicken pasta. And again, that can be used for two days. It's very easy to make. It's very quick and easy to make. It literally takes about oh, 20 minutes, half an hour. And it's a really substantial food and it will fill you up. And I think it's, that's the main part of having dinner. It's not about doing something quick that you're still hungry. I know at uni that there's a lot more things on mine that you've got a lot of things to do and time seems to go very fast when you're at uni because you're going to lectures, you come home from lectures, you've got a bit of work to do and you want to go on a night out, where do you fit food into this? You can't just chuck something in the microwave at you like that. Okay. Ready meals are great and I'll be honest with you but they're not filling enough <laughs> and I don't have much flavour in my mind. I like buying them especially when I was back home and I was working a lot because it was just easier but not the greatest. Um... My next meal is risotto. You can do a lot of things in risotto. I love risotto. One thing you have to make sure is you cook the rice properly because I've been doing it recently because I've been too impatient and the rice is a bit too crunchy, but it's still nice. Um, so risotto is a little bit longer, but it's still a quick and easy meal to make. You choose what you put in it. I usually do, I would just bacon. Um, I usually just do bacon with spring onion. And, but I've been putting chicken, I did chicken the other day. So basically you cook the chicken and bacon together with the spring onions as you did before and then you mix together a stock so you, I use chicken stock I think that's what I'm and you need risotto rice for this this is a, it's a specific rice and if you I don't actually think Lidl sells risotto rice that is the only problem with some of some things in Lidl they don't actually sell so sometimes you have to go to places like Tesco I got mine from Tesco I think for like 150 um but you need risotto rice for this because it's the, you can do it with normal rice, it just doesn't taste as good. Um, and then you what, um, mix the stock together and then once you've got the stock, you pour as much risotto rice as you want in your food. I would probably put like enough that it mixes all the food together. And then once you've got the mixture, the rice in there, you start pouring, you pour a small amount of the stock into the frying pan and you mix it together and wait for it to start absorb, absorb, absorbing absor absorbing, and then you pour more in until it's all absorbed but the thing you want is risotto rice is meant to be crunchy but not too crunchy so you want it to make sure that it's like definitely soft and you've got to leave it so but it's a very tasty meal it's very substantial it's very nice it's very different it's very good for summer surprisingly another one is a very very basic meal that I always always make especially when I've got work the, um, that day and it fills me up because where I work I'm running usually I don't know what it's going to be like now but usually I'm running around like a crazy person and you walk you I basically walk that off very quickly at work so is pasta sausage ham not ham so, pasta sausage bacon and brie you can do it with normal cheese as well, it's not just brie, but I usually, I use brie because I like the taste of it. So basically you boil the pasta, you cook the sausage, you cook the bacon, you chuck it all on top and you cut brie up or put cheese and, and put the brie on it or you just put grated cheese on top of it and it tastes amazing. It's so good and it's so filling because, and it's just so nice because when the brie or the cheese melts it makes it so much better. But that's a very, very simple and quick and easy meal to make because pasta takes like 12 minutes to cook. So you've got to just start cooking the sausages. Cause sausages are the ones that take longer out of all of them. Bacon's very quick. Um, and finally, my last meal is a spag bowl. Now, spaghetti bolognese is very, very basic. And most uni students will say they make it. Like, I've always known everywhere I go, spag bowl has been one of the things we make. It's literally, you need mince. You need some, uh, um, some kind of like smart sauce um not to write ketchup but like a pasta sauce more like is what i'm trying to think and then, so what i would do is you cut on if you want it depends what you want in it so i usually put onion in it so i cut onion up um and then i put that in the frying pan alongside if i, I want to get from frozen peppers because frozen peppers are, well peppers is really good in it but i hate cutting peppers because effort but i might just blast up my peppers um um, you cut whatever like veg you want in, like peppers, onions. I don't really know what else veg fits in a spag bowl, to be honest. And then you put your mince in it. So I advise buying frozen mince, and I will say this why in a bit. 
it lasts longer, but I'll speak more about that after I've done this. Um, you put it all in, you stir it together, you put putting your seasoning in as always if you want seasoning in it, which I do advise. And then once that's started to cook, you then get your sauce. So I use Worcestershire, Worcestershire, what, Worcestershire sauce, I think that's what you say. I can never say that word, I've never been able to say it. Um, soy sauce, um, barbecue sauce, or if I've got it, ketchup, tomato puree, and then I put, after all that's been put in, I put my pasta sauce in, and then after that I put, I make some gravy in the jar that the tomato sauce has been in. So the pasta sauce that's been in it will leave some stuff on the side of it, whatever, it's like a tin or a glass jar, there'll always be like stuff left on the side. So I always put like, um, some gravy in there, mix it all together with hot water and then put it in to make the sauce a bit more like, edgy. I don't really know what the word is, but it gives it more kick and it's so nice and then you stir it all together and then once it gets hotter you taste just I mean I recommend tasting it because then you can figure out if it needs something else in it because sometimes it doesn't taste as good as you want a little t if you've got Jack Daniels honey I definitely I used to do this at home with my parents and it tasted so good because we didn't like Jack Daniels um, honey as a drink it was disgusting but we put it in our spag bowls every time and uh, it just made it, it gave some kind of taste to it. So if you don't, or you, or you could put honey in it, it's another thing, and it just gives it a nice kick to it. And obviously, you can do pasta. So I usually use pasta because I hate spaghetti, but you can use spaghetti. You could probably use rice, I guess, but it doesn't really make the idea of spag bowl. But yeah, that is my five meals that I recommend for cooking easy meals. Um, easy ways to save. First of all, find a specific supermarket that you're going to go to and find the cheapest, don't wait, maybe not the cheapest, cheapest, like, I would recommend, so when I moved to where, my student house, I lived closer to Lidl, so I definitely was using Lidl a lot to go shopping because, come on, like, why would you choose to shop somewhere more expensive when you can choose shop in Lidl? So, because before I didn't know where the Tesco was near me, so I was always using Lidl, and then I went to Tesco, but they're not actually that bad, it's just a bit more expensive, but I use, so my weekly shop, if it's in Lidl, it comes to like £15, from the Tesco's it comes to 20 so it's only £5 difference. Um, so if some tips is, buy frozen food, because it might be a little bit more expensive anyway, when it comes to paying for it, but it will last you longer, so like frozen mints will last you longer than fresh mints. Now fresh mints is great, but you have to use it by a certain date, and if you don't want to have bad ball that week, then you've wasted your mints. And I know you can fro freeze that, but also, there's only enough for like one serving. A bag of frozen mints can last you at least two, well not one serving, but like one meal prep, I guess we would say. Um, it can, if you buy a packet, it can last you two lots of time, so you can have enough for one week and have two portions and then another lot for another week and it will last forever so you can leave it in the fridge freezer for ages and it'll still be fine um another thing i say is frozen sausages again i mean there's a packet of frozen sausages in tesco for 99p and it's 20 in a bag it's fine it's perfect um another thing i do is look for the company so the so if you went to little look for the little own um sauces and stuff and food because it's going to be cheaper than the branded stuff branded stuff is very easy to want to go to and especially if that's not the stuff your parents buy your parents do buy the shop ones you would want to buy the branded ones just out of the idea of like you never got to have this because your parents do the food shopping but don't there is a reason your parents buy the, the, the shop branded ones and not the actual branded ones is because it's cheaper you will save it will be it might even just be a 50p or a pound but you're still saving money always look for deals and also in tesco especially they do clearance sections look there for um and i think because sometimes you find some good stuff in there you never know um and also another thing to save you money is meal prep because the more you meal the, if you prepare meals or before you go food shopping plan what you want to cook that week so then you have a set amount of stuff and write a list and you don't really go off that and it saves you a bit of money because I have been several times gone to a shop, gone to... Okay, quickly filming on my phone because my battery died, I went to my camera and I was at the end. But there has been several times where I would go to do a food shop and I don't write a list, I don't plan what I want during the week, so I go there and I just pick up stuff and I don't know if it's what I want and then it goes, either goes off because I don't actually want it or 
I just spending too much money because I'm just picking it up and putting it in thing because it's very easy when you're shopping for yourself and not with your parents just to pick up stuff because you want it. It's very easy to do so. When really it's kind of a waste of money in the end because you don't always eat it. So and yeah, sometimes you're happy with it, but it also is a point where like, can you really afford to do it? Because I was very lucky with my student loan that I got the highest amount. But I didn't have anyone to ask if I if I ran out of money and needed the money, I didn't have anyone to ask. And my problem was I spent money like I had it. And I didn't think about the fact that I might run out. But in all honesty, you've got to think in like sometimes you might not have as much and I can't budget to save my life but if you set out a target on how much you want to spend you find your go-to shop and you find their cheaper sections and stuff the cheaper stuff it can work out pretty cheap for you food shopping I will warn you though your first food shop will be expensive it always is I want to I will never like first food like first food for each time for me we're never cheap because you run out of everything by the end of the time you don't really plan to leave anything in your fridge or freezer over like the holidays and um, you by the time it's the end of the last week of uni, before the holidays, you're trying to use up your last bits because you've got no money left, you've got no food, you've got barely any food, so you're just eating all the scraps that you have in your cupboards or your fridge that's sitting there that can't be eaten. So then by the time you go, you come back after the holidays, there's no food in there. So it's always expensive. Or what I say, your first food shop when you move into a place will always be expensive. Like, if you can get your parents to pay for that for you, do it because honestly, it's expensive. Um, like when you move into a student house, it's always expensive. One thing I always also will say is be prepared for fridge space. You are not living on your own. You are living with other people, and it's quite easy to buy so much stuff, and then you get home and you realise that takes up half the fridge, and you've got other people in that house. In halls, sometimes they're prepared. If you've got six people in the halls, they usually have like two fridges in your kitchen. That's fine. In the student houses, it's not the same. The last house I was in for two years, we had the smallest fridge with three shelves and a small drawer between four of us. Didn't last very well. So it didn't work very well even. Here in this new house, we've got two fridges. The problem I've had is, well, we both have, because we're, there's, only, there's only two of us in this house at the moment when I'm filming this and when you're watching this, actually. There's no one else in the house, so we basically I've used the second fridge and just used the fridge in the kitchen. Well, really, we're gonna have to cut that down, but not as much as I did in the last house, which is thank goodness for that. Um, but you've got to be prepared that you will end up wasting money because not all food because what they fit in the fridge, they'll have to sit outside, and if you don't finish it in time, it will go off because you know. Like bread, for example, is always better off in the fridge than it is on the side because it goes mouldy when you leave it on the side and it is out of date. But if you leave it in the fridge, it lasts longer. Or in the freezer. You might get away with putting it in the freezer because there might not be as much stuff in there, but the fridge will it will take up a lot of space. Also, another thing I do recommend, and a way for all these units to save money, if, for example, certain things like bread, kitchen roll, toilet roll, well, to be fair, depending on if you're in halls. If you're in halls and you've got an ensuite, you won't need to worry about buying toilet roll whenever I like, spit in it or like have a row of who buys it um milk if you guys for example are milk people who drink milk maybe buy it together as a house or what's one week you buy milk and then week someone else buys milk whenever the milk runs out just to make it fair because it always works out better that way because in first year I didn't share my milk with people because I was only always have milk for coffee other than that but then they don't really drink milk much, so it didn't work. But in the new house, I did. Another thing is, um, the uh, cooking oil. You could also save money there if you'd work through it as a collective and not just yourself. So, also another thing to save you guys money is if you get on with your flatmates or your housemates. Good, make a house. Do once a week, maybe twice a week. Once a week, maybe do a house meal. So, you buy one set of ingredients for one meal for all of you to have. And you all chip in a bit of amount. That is one day of cooking and you all work together. It's nice. But I had a friend who used to do weekly roast dinners every Sunday. And it was like, that sounded like a nice thing to do in your house. Or, for example, Christmas. Do a Christmas dinner as a house. We did. I've done it every year in my happy birthday room. It's great. It's a nice thing to do before you go home for Christmas with your family. You spend it with the people you've lived with. Because although they're not actually your family, you live with them. So it kind of becomes like a family as well. And you're open here. So. Yeah. 
Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling on because this video turned out to be longer than I planned and I need to put my camera back to the chat so. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, please comment down below, please subscribe and I will see you again very soon with another video.